Greetings and welcome to the Greater Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church located 3835 Whitewater Road right here in the city of Valdosta, Georgia. We're glad that you have joined us on tonight to be a part of our Wednesday night word in the Lord. We encourage you to join us on each and every Wednesday night for a Wednesday night word here at Mount Calvary to be a part of our Wednesday night word where we share the word of God with you. We have a uh, Wednesday night word every Wednesday night. And then on the last Wednesday of the month, we have our Wednesday night live where we spotlight our ministries here at Calvary at 7 o'clock p.m. And then on Sundays, we have our in-person service at 8 a.m., our in-person service at 8 a.m., where masks are uh, required and social distance will be enforced. And then we have our conference call Sunday school on the line at 9.20 a.m. on each and every Sunday. You can dial that number, 701-802-5337, and the access code is 683-1205 in the pound symbol for our conference call Sunday school at 9.20 on Sundays, as well as we have our online worship service at 10.15 a.m. The link to join us is www.worshipwith.com mtcalvary.org forward slash live or you can also give your tithe and offering by downloading the application Giblify or the link www.worshipwithmtcalvary.org forward slash giving or you can drop off your uh, tithe and offering to our designated deacons in the parking area on Sundays from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. We're just glad that you have joined with us on tonight and we give God the praise and God the glory and God the honor that we give, amen, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit honor on tonight to our ministerial staffs here at Mount Calvary, to their spouses, to my lovely spouse on tonight, Lady Evelyn Diane Vincent, to our deacons, deaconess, mothers, saints, and friends, to all of you in your respective places. We're glad that you have joined us for another Wednesday night word. Let us go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you. God, we just give you praise. God, we just give you glory. God, we just give you honor. We thank you for another chance, another opportunity to come and share your word with your people on tonight, God. We pray that you give us clarity and understanding your word. Give us teaching power that you would get the praise, that you would get the glory, that you would get the honor. We bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you praise and we give you glory for all the things you're doing and things you will continue to do and how you continue to bless in a mighty way, God. This might be somebody sick that is listening to the hearing this broadcast and telecast. Father, we pray that you heal, set free, and deliver right now, God. Whatever situation they're in, turn it around. Bless them, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, give them a miracle on their behalf, O oh Father God. Put them in your hand and your tender care. We thank you for all the things you're going to do and continue to do. Give us teaching power. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. On last week, we shared with you out of James, the eight, fourth chapter in verse number eight. Amen. Our scripture, amen. James, the fourth chapter in verse number eight. It says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. We've been talking, amen, about intimacy with God, coming close to God, coming close to God, having a real relationship with God, not just a mere surface relationship, but having a deeper understanding and a relationship with God, not a drive-by relationship, Amen. Not a every now and then relationship, but having a deep, close relationship with God. The phrase that we talked about, draw near, simply means to approach or get close to a thing. In other words, to get close to God. In the day and the time that we are living in, we certainly need to be close to God. And we're going to be able to survive and thrive in these times. I said we certainly need to be close to God if we're going to be able to survive and thrive during these trying times. You got to get close to God. We shared with you 
you that Luke said that thou shalt Luke 10 and 27 said that thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart with all thy soul with all thy strength and with all thy mind thy neighbor as thyself and everything you got to give God everything you want to be close you want to be intimate with God you got to put everything as they say in sports leave it all on the field you got to put it all on the field, amen, and leave it unto the Lord. You got, amen, when you are intimate with someone, you trust them. You share your important secrets with them. And so that we know that we have to be intimate with God. We have to share and trust God. We have a father-child relationship that develops when we're intimate with God. The fruits of God's spirit is cultivated when we're intimate with God. And our daily life will become a reflection of God himself. When we are close and intimate with God, we have a connection with God. We are knowing of God. We got good feelings about it. We are comfortable with God. We feel comfort with God. We are safe in safety with God when we have an intimate relationship with the Lord. Sometimes we get caught up in all kinds of things to be busy with life and we lose that connection that we once had with God. And if you're not saved, you don't know the Lord and the partner you're seeing, this is your chance to get close to God, to come to him and get close to him. If you do and have a relationship with God and you are a Christian or a believer, this is the time to rekindle, to refocus that relationship with God and get back to intimacy with God. And so God desires us. We talked about it last week. God desires intimacy with us. He desires to be close with us. And do you do you have an intimacy with God? And we talked about four different paths that we can be deeper in our intimacy with God. We talked about knowing God by studying his word, knowing God by studying his word. We talked about commit to living for him, commit to living for him. And then we talked about trust him. Oh, yes, trust him. You got to trust him. And then uh, we number four that we talked about uh, in our lesson on last week was we have to prioritize him. Make him priority number one. Prioritize him. Make him number one. Don't make God a second class thing in your life, but make him number one. Make him a priority in your life. Put him first. Get rid of the distractions in your life and make God number one. On tonight, we're going to start on part two. As we start, amen, we just want to give you a quick review of part one. But part number two, Solomon was asked by God, what do you want more than anything in the world? He was assured that whatever he chose, God would give him. He could ask for wealth, a long life, a power over his enemies, but he asked for none of those things. Instead, he asked for wisdom, that intimate knowledge of God that strengthens one with the skill to guide and govern people in a way that pleases God. And so because he chose intimacy with God over wealth, long life, or power over his enemies, God gave him what he asked for, and then threw in the other things as a bonus. Isn't that amazing? God gave him what he asked for, and then he threw in some other things as a bonus. Solomon knew, amen, the importance of intimacy. He knew that apart from God, he would not be a wise king. God chose to bless him Profusely because his desire, amen. But this is not the case of everyone who desire or has intimate relationship with God. The blessing is going deeper. It's not always material, but it's always spiritual. Yeah. Amen. Sometimes we're looking for a material, amen, blessing all the time. But it's not necessarily going to come that way. But you can always get a spiritual blessing. We become more like him. And that's a blessing that we all can receive is to be more like the Lord. As I draw near, he draw near to me like a puzzle that comes together, closing the gap, smoothing out the edges. Once more, I become more focused on the end goal, craving a deeper intimacy with God. Though I may flounder or struggle or stagger along the way, which we all do, 
But God, he is always there. This is a God that deserves my all. When I'm close to him, the harder it is for anything to come between us. I need to say that again for somebody tonight. When I'm close to him, the harder it is for anything to come in between us. Deeper intimacy with God is worth it. It is the only thing that what really matter. Seek him first. And everything else will what, fall in place. Matthew 6 and 33 says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you as well. You got to seek him first. And then if you seek him first, all that you've been praying for, all that you've been wanting and desiring, he'll bring that along with you. But that, that's how you got to get intimate with God. Have an intimate relationship with God by seeking him first. We say you've got to make him priority number one. He can't be a second-class citizen in your life. He got to be what? Number one. Amen. People have a tendency to put everything in front of God and then want him to show up. But if you put him first, he'll be there all right there when you need him. True, true intimacy with God is something that has been sought by Christians since Christ walked the earth. It is a natural for Christians to long to experience the closeness of intimate relationship with God. But true intimacy with God is not simply a feeling on a par with a romantic relationship. It goes much deeper than emotions. I say it goes much deeper than emotion. See, romantic folks fall in and fall out. Y'all don't hear me. But amen. But this thing with God is so deep. It's down to our very soul. Amen. I say it's down to our very soul. And it's reflected of our actions with him. For the Lord, he detests the perverse, but takes the upright into his confidence. Proverbs 3 and 32 says, For the forward is an abomination to the Lord, but his secret is with what? Righteousness. God desires they men to know the secrets of our heart. He desires for us to be close to him. Amen. You can tell him anything and he won't tell nobody else. God cannot have intimacy with evil. Let me say that again. God cannot have intimacy with evil or with the disobedient Christians. True intimacy with God begins with drawing near to him. That's what we talked about earlier in our text in our first part number one. We talked about how Adam and Eve was close to God in the Garden of Eden. But when they sinned, they were kicked out of the garden. They lost that intimacy with God. Amen. God came and talked with them every day. Came to see about them and provided everything that they needed. But when they messed up, when they caused sin to come into their life, that broke that true intimacy with God. True intimacy with God begins with us drawing near to Him. You can't be doing your dirt and be close to God. Amen. Yeah, somebody don't like that tonight, but it's just the truth of the matter. God will never draw near to those who do not draw near to Him. He, and the way we draw near is through what righteousness. When you do right by God, he'll do right by you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. It says cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. That's James 4 and 8. That's our scripture. But certainly God will never draw near in intimacy with unrighteousness. But those who have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ and have received his righteousness at the cross, Amen. That's, and we can look at that at 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. As the song says, it was at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. And the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And I am happy all the day. You got to get it at the cross and have the hope of intimacy with God. In fact, it is the only, only those who have been saved by grace through faith who have that hope because Christ is the hope through which we draw near to God. We are hoping and drawing near to God by our intimacy with him. Jesus, in fact, is the model of intimacy with God. He is our model because he and the father are what one. 
John 10 30 lets us know no relationship can be closer than that the oneness with the father that Jesus experienced his relationship with the father was characterized by love and obedience and love Jesus came to the earth to do his father's will he did nothing on his own but all things did the will of his father John 5 St. John 5 and 30 this was most evident in the garden of Gethsemane the night before his crucifixion suffering the agony of anticipation what was to come Jesus asked that the fate uh, he was about to suffer might be removed from him but he ended the plea saying yet not my will but yours be done saying father if you are willing remove this cup from me nevertheless not my will but what your will be done that means he had a close relationship with God he was telling God whatever you want me to do I'm willing and I'm ready I'm beating I'm ready to go through this pain this agony but here we see a perfect example of true intimacy reflected in the garden of Gethsemane reflected in his obedience because he why he was obedient unto the father Jesus and he yield to the will that the father sent him to do amen he could have got out of it but he said, I remain obedient. I came to do the will of the Father. Lord, I ask for this cup, but not my will, but your will be done. And that's when you got a close relationship to God. It's not your way, but it's God's way. It's not your will, but it's God's will be done in your life. It ain't always feel good. Y'all don't hear me. I say that y'all don't always feel good. But if you do God's will, he'll bring you out for the best and for the greater every time. If we hope to obtain true intimacy with God, Jesus is our perfect model. We love God because why he first loved us. He proved our love for him by obeying him. Jesus told his followers, if you love me, keep my what? Commandments. And when we obey him, we keep what he has commanded us. He promised that we will remain in his love. Just say he remained in the love of the Father by doing his will of the Father. There can only be intimacy with God when we are in good relationship and good fellowship with him through oh, what? obedience. Your children, when they obey you, they have a good relationship with you. Then it's the same thing with God. When we obey God, we have a good relationship with him. Then we can know that the joy and the peace that come from trusting him and yielding to his will just as Jesus did. As believers tonight, it's imperative that we have an intimate relationship with God. Our level of intimacy with God will determine how much we victory and success we experience in our lives. You got to get close to him. We do not have intimate relationship by default just because you are born again. An intimate relationship with God is available to every believer, but we must well, cultivate it. We must nurture it. We must develop it like any other relationship. We got to spend time with it. it but amen. It is, if we're not careful, we can get so caught up in the doing things and, and doings of Christianity that we neglect the foundation and the principle of Christianity that our relationship with God will go to the wayside. God wants us to be involved in every area of our lives. He wants to be important to us. He wants to communicate with us on a daily basis. We just can't wait the Sunday to talk to the Lord. Therefore, it's imperative that we do everything necessary to cultivate our relationship with God and deepen our levels of intimacy with him. So let's begin and look at Philippians 3 and 10. It says that I may know this Paul talking that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made comfortable unto his death. Paul say, I got to get to know him, to be close to him, to be intimate with him. I want to be so that I know him in the power of of his resurrection, to know him in the power of his suffering, to know him in the power of his anger, to know him in the power of what he went through on the cross. I want to get so close to him that I can feel what he felt, even while he was on the cross, dying for my sin. He stepped in for me, and I want to be so close to him. The Amplified Version says this verse, uh, Philippians 3 and 10 says, for my, my determined purpose that I may know him, 
that I may progress to become more deeper and intimately acquainted with him, the perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person most strongly and more clearly. The verse make it clear that Paul was saying is highly interested in developing an intimate relationship with God. Paul said, I want to know him. I, I, I've had education. I've had, I've been to school. I've had knowledge. I've become a scholar. I've got, amen, education. But I want to have a personal relationship with God. I, I, the book is fine. But Paul said, listen, I want to get close to God. The word know that in that verse means to have an intimate relationship, fellowship with God and know him intimately. Paul is placing the utmost priority on having an intimate relationship with God. He said, it's, I'm determined my purpose is to be intimate with God, to be close to God with my heavenly father that my relationship may what grow in him. Yeah, I say grow in him, develop in him, progressively become more intimate every day of my life. We need to be determined like Paul in that way and purpose in our hearts to have an intimate relationship with God. Like Paul did, it should be our determined purpose to know him and to know God in an intimate way in fellowship with him all of the time. You got to know him to get to really know him. Amen. I said you got to know him to really get to know him. And when you know him and he know you, that's something else about the relationship. When you know him and he knows you, you can have a greater relationship with God. What are some of the common misconceptions about intimacy with God? Amen. One of the misconceptions, we're going to close shortly. Intimacy is, is, not, uh, is not akin to sex. An intimate relationship with God is not akin to sex. First, in the world that regularly define intimacy as a sexual thing. When somebody say they want to be intimate with you, people, first thing they go to is thinking about a sexual conversation or sexual relationship. Amen. But that's not the case with God. It is a difficult concept to fathom when it comes to God. God is a spirit. And we that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit. However, so there is nothing sexual about our intimate relationship with him. That's not, some people have that misconception. The first thing they think about is sex when you talk about intimacy with God. It's vital that we have a close relationship with God, but there's not a sexual relationship with God. Isn't it just like the evil devil to take a word that describes something so vital and confuse us to discomfort us about as it relates to the pursuit of God? He want to take the word that we talk about intimacy with God and make something dirty and nasty about it, something worldly about it. But honey, the bottom line is if you're going to be close and going to be intimacy with anybody, you need to be with God. If you're going to be close to anybody, it need to be with God. Because let me tell you, at the end of the day, when you close close your eyes, it's going to only be between you and God. Not the one, amen, that you might have a relationship, a partnership with, or a marriage with, but it's going to be between you and God on judgment day. And that's the best place to be, is close and intimacy with God, that he know you and you know him, and he can tell you to come on home. Another uh, misconception is intimacy should be easy. Intimacy with God takes a lot of effort. Many believers want to take the time, don't want to take the time that it requires. We want to, amen, amen, do something, amen, quick, fast, and in a hurry. Don't want to spend time with him. After all, he might demand too much of my attention or might ask me to do something that I don't want to do. Amen. They got their ticket to heaven, but they want to keep their day-to-day -day life separate from God. Amen. They want to be saved, but they don't want to have no relationship with God. They want to come and repent their sin, but they don't want to go back and do what they want to do. and don't want to spend any time with God. But pursuing him compromises their anatomy. Amen. Blinded by their own selfish independency, they don't know what they are missing. So I come to tell you tonight, intimacy with God is going to require some effort. It's not going to be easy. It's going to require some of your time. It can require some quality time with God. Another misconception is intimacy should, shouldn't involve waiting. Hmm. We've, we've been groomed by the media to expect quick results from little effort. I said we've been groomed by life and social media to be expect quick results with little effort. We are unconsciously put a stopwatch on God and his promises. And when he doesn't line up 
to our expectation, we move on to something else. The concept of waiting on the Lord has become, amen, a word of the past. We don't want to think about waiting on God. We don't want to wait on God. We don't want to wait. But intimacy in God requires us to wait on him. That's why Isaiah says, but they that wait on the Lord, he shall renew their strength. You got to wait on him. And when you wait on him, he'll come to your rescue. And when you wait on him, you got to you that builds trust in him, knowing that he can, that he will. But we don't want to wait on God. We want everything quick, fast, and in a hurry. We want to microwave God. God ain't a microwave God. You got to learn how to wait on him. Lastly, one another miscon misconception that we have, intimacy with God is only for special people. Many people assume that being intimate with God is for a special call. The average person can't go there because they've been compromised by their lackluster or sinful Christian life. It's only those people that are preachers and ministers and uh, people in position in the church. That's the only one need to be intimate. God. No, that ain't what God, God don't have no respect person. Amen. If you want to be close to God, I don't care if you ain't nothing but a pew member. I don't care if you ain't nothing but a usher. I don't care if you ain't nothing but a regular attender. If you want to be close to God, God will be close to you. The text doesn't say anything about a prophet, a preacher, a teacher, a pastor, a bishop. It don't say nothing. It says draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. That's what the text said. It didn't say nothing about no title. It didn't say nothing about no position. It didn't say nothing about how much money you give in the church. It didn't say how long you've been saved, how long you've been sanctified. It didn't say nothing about that. It says draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. The word, we can be, everybody can be intimate with God if they want to be. You got to want to be. You got to have to have that desire. It is the trick of the enemy to keep you from that, amen, from being close to God. It's the diversion from knowing the glories of eternal life, which began when we gave our life to Christ. We have to work on these things. We have to want to be close to God. It's hard to figure out. Somebody says it's hard to figure out how to be close to God. It's not hard to figure out how to be close to God. You just got to want to be close you got to want to be close to God. Although many talk glowingly about having a relationship with God, intimate relationship with God, through describe how to get there. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Through describe how to get there. But few outline the path of intimacy. I want to explain to you, and I hope I have explained to you on these last two lessons, that you can get close to God. You can get close to God. It doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, what your background is, what sins you committed. If you repent and ask God to come in your heart, you can get close to him. You can have that intimate relationship with God. And the more you have that intimate relationship with God, the more he can do for you, the more he will work with you, the more he'll work through you and for you in your life. <clears throat> God bless you on tonight. We pray that this word has blessed you and helped you along on your Christian walk. And we praying that God will continue to be with you in a special way. If you're not saved tonight, and don't know the Lord and the partner of your sin, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive all my sins and my transgression. Lord, save me. I want to live for you. I want to be your child. I want to walk in your path. I want to be in your kingdom. I receive you as my Savior and my Redeemer in Jesus' name. God bless you. Heaven, keep you as our prayer. We pray that, amen, this Bible study has been a blessing to you on tonight. Intimacy with God. You can have it. We pray that God continue to bless you and keep you as our prayer. Father, we thank you for these that are watching, these that are tuning in, that will tune in now and tune in later. Father, we thank you for these. Continue to bless and move by your spirit, by your power, and by your anointing. Walk with them, talk with them, lead them, get the right, direct their path to Father God. And God, that someone might be sick, just heal, set free, and deliver right now, God. Turn it around, deliver them, oh God. Bless them indeed, oh God. And lift them up, God. Somebody might be bereaved tonight. Strengthen them in the hour of loss, oh God. And God, work a miracle in their lives and their behalf, oh God. Whatever it is, God, we pray for them now, God. You got power. You can go where we can't go. You can do what we can't do. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for it. We give you praise and we give you glory and we give you honor. We bless you on tonight. In Christ Jesus' name, we do pray. And we thank you for all things. In the great Jesus' name. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest rule in the Bible to you henceforth now and forever. And all God people say, Amen. God bless you. Remember, you don't have any trouble, but all you need is faith in God. Until the next time, be blessed.
and highly favored of the Lord.